Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst with Money Markets here with your Bull and the Bear podcast. I want to start by thanking each and every one of you who watch our videos on YouTube every week and listen to our podcast. Uh, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in, in providing you with the best analysis of the stock market and the economy each and every week. Um, if you haven't already, do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or, or to our or to your favorite podcast syndicator if you find us there, if you're listening to us that way. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, leave us a comment. Uh, leave us a question. Love to see your feedback. Also, make sure you head over to moneymarkets.com. Uh, that is your home for safe sound smart, simple, profitable investment information uh, for your portfolio. And on the site, you can check out our Green Zone rating system. Uh, this is where we rate uh, thousands of stocks based on six fundamental and technical metrics. Uh, you can create your own watch list, you can track your stock performance, get our in-depth analysis, and you can do all that for free at moneymarkets.com. Now, let's, uh, let's talk today um, about something that's kind of front of mind, uh, but only when it actually happens to you. Now, I I've been very fortunate. I've never been hacked. I've never had my identity stolen and I've never had my personal information stolen and used for nefarious purposes. But now believe me, uh, I, am, I am in my head uh, pounding on wood uh, as, as, a, as a superstition because I said it, it's never happened. And then all of a sudden when you say it, it's going to happen. But I've been one of the lucky few because there's millions of Americans uh, that have not been as fortunate. Um, data breaches and cyber hacking, uh, they're, they're both in the news now uh, more than they have been before. And it's why we spend billions of dollars on cybersecurity every year. Now, as technology advances, hackers grow their skill set uh, to be able to steal our information uh, to a point to where it's very hard for companies and individuals to keep up. Uh, and it's why cybersecurity has become a more important sector now than it's really ever been. Uh, and today, what I want to talk about is uh, let's take a look at the closer, uh, take a closer look at the cybersecurity market. Uh, and then I'm going to share with you uh, some of the best ways you can play uh, the trends that I've noticed. Um, now, so cybersecurity is something, like I said, that every uh, person uh, and business has to confront at some point at some point in time. From securing personal information to safeguarding terabytes of data, uh, cybersecurity is moving to the front of mind for everyone, especially now. Um, in 2016, we spent around $32.3 billion on cybersecurity. That ranges from hardware to IT services to software. That spending increased steadily until the COVID-19 pandemic forced businesses and individuals to really rethink their spending. So around 2020, we saw a bit of a slowdown. It was more, but not nearly as much percentage-wise as we'd seen in previous years. Now, now that we're you know, apparently past the pandemic uh, to a degree, uh, and with global cybersecurity threats really increasing day by day, uh, spending on cybersecurity is expected to reach more than $78 billion by 2026. That's a 58% increase over pandemic level spending. And the cybersecurity market is growing at a rapid pace, but not just here in the United States. Globally, the cybersecurity sector brought in around $218 billion in revenues in 2021. That number is expected to reach $345.4 billion by 2026. That's an increase of more than 58% in a short amount of time. In those six years, the compound annual growth rate or CAGR of the cybersecurity market globally is going to be around 9.7%. That's impressive when you think of it on a global scale. Now, the question is, is how can you as an investor capitalize on the growing need for cybersecurity? Well, I'm glad that I asked, that you asked, that someone asked. I've tracked about three different cybersecurity exchange, exchange traded funds. My, I, I choose ETFs uh, because they get you solid exposure without digging through thousands of potential companies. And they do more often than not pay a dividend. Now I'll start by looking at the three ETFs related to cybersecurity that I found and track their total returns dating back to the most recent market downturn, which was March of 2020. I don't really count uh, the first part of 2022 just yet uh, because it was a much more precipitous drop uh, in March of 2020 than it has been over the first three months of this year. Now, over the first, over the last two years, rather, all three have performed well, um, even considering the most recent market conditions when tech stocks suffered. This is when I'm referring to the first part of 2022. Now, since March of 2020, the ETFMG uh, Prime Cyber Security ETF, which trades under the ticker symbol HACK, H-A-C-K, is up about 90%. The Vanguard Information Technology ETF, or VGT, has moved up 114%. 
And the first trust NASDAQ cybersecurity ETF or cyber CIBR is up more than 136%. Now the performance is very slightly as we zero in on the time frame. For example, just in the last 12 months, hack is up about 29.5%, cyber is up 25%, VGT is only up about 16.8%. And for context, only hack and cyber are beating the S&P 500 over a year time frame. Uh, the S&P 500 is up about 17% over the last year, whereas only hack and cyber are beating that margin uh, VGT falls just a bit short. Now, so since Hack and Cyber hold similar companies in their portfolio, I, I want to try to find that one thing that really stood out. And what I found was the dividend. Now, the projected annual yield for Hack is around 0.27% or 16 cents per share. Cyber, on the other hand, this is where you kind of have to uh, really dig deep when you think about percentages. The annual yield is only about 0.06% but that actually comes out to 31 cents per share. So we're looking at almost double the annual dividend yield for cyber than we see for hack. Now, cyber started trading in 2015. Here's something else that I found. Uh, since that point, the stock has climbed more than 173%. It's beating uh, other sector ETFs by a wide margin. Now, hack started trading about six months before that in 2014 and has only gained 137% since inception. So that means that cyber has gained more in a shorter time and is outperforming hack on a wider scale. Cyber holds around 41 companies and cash in its portfolio. Among its biggest holdings are CrowdStrike Holdings, Cisco Systems, uh, Palo Alto Networks, uh, Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare, really, or rather, Zscaler and Splunk, and, and they have much, much more. Um, and Hack holds a, a very similar line of companies. Um, so what we have here is we have a trend, we have a trend indicating the cybersecurity market is only going to get stronger over the next several years. And the best way to tap into this market would be to find a strong performing exchange traded fund that immediately diversifies your, your cybersecurity exposure. So what we have is we have a strong dividend yield by comparison and a better overall return track record. Uh, cyber, in my opinion, is probably the best bet for you to jump in and take advantage of huge future gains uh, in this sector uh, coming up. Uh, probably sooner th rather than we think. And and remember, Adam, Charles, and myself are all very bullish on cybersecurity, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, and these new mega trends involving technology uh, that we're going to see just grow and, and in fact explode over the next several years. Uh, now, let me revisit our YouTube poll question from last week. La with last week's announcement from the Federal Reserve on interest rate hikes, we wanted to know, um, were you still bullish on stocks uh, with a 25 basis point uh, rise in interest rates? Now, more than half, about 66% of those who voted in the poll said they were still bullish uh, and that the rate hikes would not hold back top stocks and sectors. Only 29% said that higher rates and, and the threat of higher inflation could be a recipe for a bear market. And uh, uh, most others, uh, yeah, that was about uh, the extent we had about 0.5% um, who suggested that? Who suggested other things? Uh, so more, more not more than not, uh, a majority of you believe that we're still going to be uh, we're still going to see strong uh, returns from the market, uh, even with uh, the potential for even more Fed rate hikes coming up soon. Uh, thank you for everyone who took part in our in our weekly poll. Remember, uh, you can vote in the poll on our YouTube page. Just go to our YouTube channel and search under the community tab. It's usually right there up top. Uh, you can find it there and vote. Uh, and we'd love to see what uh, what uh, what you have to say. And if you have a question uh, about a particular stock or a sector that we'd like me or Adam or Charles to take a look at, we would love to do that. Uh, just reach out to us. You can email us at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll drop that right down below. Uh, feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. Or if you're watching this as a video, you can comment down below on our YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, we're more than happy to take on your question. If we do, if you submit a question and we use it, uh, then we are going to get you in line for some very cool Money and Markets gear like this t-shirt that I have on right here. Uh, and so do that again. Feedback at moneymarkets.com is the email address, or you can comment down below on our YouTube channel. Also head over to moneymarkets.com, sign up for our free daily e-letter. Uh, in it, we give you safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information, seven days a week. And you can check out our proprietary green zone rating system. Uh, use our metrics to get the ratings of thousands of stocks uh, out there. Just go to the website in the top right hand corner, you'll see a search bar, uh, type in your stock, uh, either the ticker or the company, uh, and uh, you'll be able to see the ratings of the stocks, fundamental data, a uh, stock chart, you can even add stocks to your own personal watch list, a uh, uh, hot list on money and markets, you can do all that for free. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, as, as much as you would like. Uh, that's all for me this week. Until next time, this is Money and Markets Research Analyst and host of the Bull and the Bear podcast, Matt Clark, wishing everyone safe trading.